Priori is with us this morning, the industry's troubleshooter, the head of LGM and Associates Technical Flooring Services. And Lou, how are you? I'm good, Dave. How are you? Okay. That's good. great. Good. Now, Lou is out in the field. He's called in on problems and solves them, at least attempts to solve them. And Sometimes we really do solve them. Sometimes he actually <laughs> does, much to my amazement. Um, this particular one deals with porcelain tile and face issues. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. One of my absolute favorite products. I love porcelain. It is just gorgeous. Just really, um, really a beautiful product and, and can look like so many different things. In this case, this porcelain is looks like wood and uh, it's a, a rectangular shaped product. And the that when it was installed, they were seeing these little tiny squares on the front and at first nobody could figure out what they were so uh, little, tiny squares. little tiny squares like egg like egg crates and and i've got the material here we can okay. you can show it in this segment uh when we're finished here but on the face you can see these things and you can't really see it when we're sitting here looking at it but when you look at it at a certain angle and it's pretty obvious that these little squares are on the face well you turn the material all over on its backside and you look at the back and that's the pattern that's on the back of the material from when it was poured and when so they the pattern that's on the back of one piece is on the face on well the face when, when they packaged it it was rubbing against it and it actually scratched that pattern uh -huh. into the face now i told you what happened so um the the manufacturer was saying and the distributor well, we can come out there and we can use Bartender's Friend, which is basically a cleansing cleanser. And, you know, we can light pumice it and that'll take it out. Well, and then they were going to use something else. And they had been out there two or three times and nothing worked. Then they got to the point where they're saying, we're going to use acid. And I says, well, wait a minute, wait, wait. You're not using acid because people may be walking on this floor with their bare feet. You've got... Uh, it's not meant to have acid used on it, and the acids that they were talking about um, were, were not the type that you need to even be fooling around with. When we use them at the lab, they're extraordinarily dangerous, and you have to take extreme precautions using them. So we brought the, the material in, and we did everything that they said they had done, and then we did some other things. And nothing took the scratches off because they're scratches. They actually scratched into the face. And you weren't going to buff these out. You weren't going to grind them out. You weren't going to acid etch them out. You weren't going to do anything. We did find something that worked, however, which is a polish. Uh, and it worked very well, covered everything up. However, the difference was it put a shiny finish on the material, which nobody liked. Uh, and we didn't, you know, nobody did the whole thing. It was just, we did just the one thing to show examples of what each, uh, each step of the process of elimination was. And they says, well, we can't do that because the look doesn't look like wood anymore. It looks like a shiny vinyl floor, and that's not the look that anybody wanted. But the problem here was quite simple. When they packaged the stuff, they didn't have enough packaging material or packaging material between them that when it was shipped, it's, you know, it's going to vibrate, and it just vibrated the back into the front of every one of these planks. And it looked... So is this a pretty wide... This must have happened in a lot of places other than just the job you took. Well, this was the only one that... Uh, I mean... And that's a good point that you bring up. You know, sometimes it just might be that one where it happened. And maybe somebody messed up when they packaged the stuff because typically you're going to have something in between there yeah. to keep this from happening so who knows what happened that day that this order got shipped and it didn't have enough cushioning in between the, yeah, the pieces so it wasn't anything that anybody said you know we look we've had sold this stuff before we have never had this problem before now we got it and they probably subsequently won't have the problem again uh, so this was a one-of-a-kind deal fascinating because it was, you know, wow, this is amazing. Uh, similar to, you know, this was quite obvious. Uh, but we've had cases with, with hard surface flooring materials, um, like a marble or a porcelain or whatever, that's been polished. And somebody says, well, we see these swirls in the floor. 
but we only see them between 8.30 and 9.30 in the morning. And uh, when the sun hits at just a particular angle, the other 23 hours of the day, we don't see them. So what do you want to do? You want to, you know, we look at the stuff, we bring it in, we wait till the sun gets to the, you know, we can put them in this room, for example, I can put them outside. We can find the sunlight to show, or we can put them under light, but typically it's natural light. We can see, yep, there they are, this is exactly, this is when they polish this stuff and that's what they're seeing in here. But otherwise, you're not going to see it, no one's going to see it, but you're sitting there and it's in a break room or something and you're sitting here having coffee and there they are. And then they go away at 9.31. Well, you know, is this really a problem? Uh, so nobody's going to, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but you're not going to replace a floor for something like that. Yeah. That's a characteristic and it's just something that you're going to see. That's almost like a carpet, for example, when you're plying the yarn and, you know, you can see something that looks streaky, but you only see it at 9.35 in the morning and then it goes away. Well, you're not going to replace all of the material just because you see it then. We've actually got a big project like that right now that they can see a, a, a patterning in one of the solid colors that's used on the project and we know that it's the way the two ends are applied together and then the way they're twisted. But they only show up in certain light. That's it. Otherwise you don't see them. And now you get to a certain point of the project where there's natural light coming in and they can see them and say, oh my God, we can see these things. And so we go back into manufacture, which we've got retainage from everything because it's one of, the, one of the projects that we're consultants on. And we're looking at it, and I'm looking at it with the manufacturer. Well, there they are. They've been here from the very beginning, and they're up to the last run of the material. And we put them in the type of light that they're seeing there, and sure enough, there they are. And we know what it is. So it's like, well, you only see them here. So, and during this time. So it's not, you know, it's a characteristic. It's an inherent characteristic of the material. This stuff that we're talking about in this case with these porcelain planks is not a characteristic. This is actually a packaging problem. Yeah. And they wound up getting installed. The installer's putting the stuff down. He doesn't really see it uh, because it's not blatantly obvious, but it is obvious enough that it's, you know. So, so, so what happened with this? Did they just live with it? No, they're going to replace it. It's got to be replaced. Well, you can't fix it. Yeah, you can't fix it. Because the end user doesn't want, we can, we can fix it by putting a finish on it. And the finish is a good material and it should be but fairly fit. No, but that's not what they, they don't want a super shiny floor, they want it, yeah, they, they bought it, they bought it with that matte look and that's what they want, yeah, so that's, and, that's what they should, absolutely, yeah. you know, it's not a problem unless the end user or the client thinks it's a problem, yeah. and then when you can go out and substantiate the fact that, you know what, they're right, this is what the problem is, here's, here's what it is, here's what caused it, had nothing to do with anything they else. Get what they specified what Absolutely. They so that's going to get replaced. Very good. Let's leave it there. We will. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome, Dave. My pleasure. We've been talking with Lou Milioy, the industry's troubleshooter.